what would government do with the money? How will we track it? Will the money not be stolen again? All those questions have been addressed. And what has been done on that way is to create a framework for transparency. You cannot control how money is spent. And I'm sure you all agree with me because I'm sure we have a lot of lawyers in the room. So you know what I'm talking about. Nobody can sit in Abuja and tell the governor of the entire state how to spend their money. You have no such powers. But you can report how much you've collected, isn't it? One thing with reporting and transparency is that in itself is a deterrent for people not to steal. If I tell you how much I've paid every state, every single month, it is more difficult now to steal because when they say there's no money, they say, sir, they just paid you 15 billion. How did you spend it? So what they have done on that way is that the information will be captured and shared with Nigerians when this scheme is over about how much every single state has collected under this scheme. So that you see what your state collected and then ask them, how are you spending the money eventually? So, in the tax authorities file that you can find on the website, it tells you about different scenarios that will let you know that you need to also declare yourself. Sometimes we think that we are fully compliant, but we haven't given it a lot of thoughts. For example, if you are working for a private sector organization or public sector organization, they pay you salary, they don't pay YA. In your mind, you paid all your taxes, isn't it? But maybe not. If you have a property and you have tenant and you're collecting rent, there's no pay why deducted on that one, isn't it? And it's liable to tax. Now, you are better than some other guys who haven't paid at all. But you are not clean yourself. Because being clean is being clean. It cannot be 99%, it has to be 100%. So what this tax authority file, what it does is to give you different scenarios. Now, help you think about it and say, is this something I'm not doing right enough? You know, for example, one of the, one of the examples I gave, so I went to discuss this with the Joint Task Board. Interestingly, when I asked the Joint Task Board about their level of compliance, they were honest. Even then, they were not fully compliant. That's the tax map. One of the areas that say is someone like me who speaks from time to time. If you go and speak and somebody says, take honorarium, and they give you 100k. If you take out transportation out of it and fuel or whatever it is, maybe 60k, you have 40k left. Go and declare it. And pay tax on it, yes. <laughs> somebody says, tax, you go and pay. <laughs> Before you pay tax, who to pay tax first? Okay, I don't want to enter that debate because I know I cannot win it. Yeah. Some of us are, so I'm a Christian, so I'm not saying that paying tithe is wrong. But I also have my own principles about how you should be paid. And I think you should pay tax first before you pay tithe. Even Jesus said, give on to Caesar, right? Exactly. Because at the end of the day, you know, you must comply with laws. You can't say you're serving God and you're very religious and you're disobeying laws. When, even when I don't like laws, I comply first and then I complain. And then we see how we can change them. So you have different scenarios. I will not go through them one by one. Uh, in terms of the legal basis, and I, I'm sure my friend already discussed that, uh, we have different promises that have been made in the executive order, including immunity from prosecution, whatever you declare now, nobody is going to prosecute you, the information will not be shared with another agency like EFCC. Um, you will not be tax audited for the period that you declared, and you get waiver of penalty and interest, and you have the opportunity to pay an installment for up to three years. Now, uh, if you don't comply, and government comes after you. You not only pay penalty and interest, you are exposed to prosecution because the laws are there. If you do tax evasion, that's a criminal offense. And the government can do something about it. Now, if you declare on that base, your information will be treated in a confidential manner. So confidentiality is, is guaranteed. You know, interestingly, the reason why I couldn't 
come very early today was because I had an event in Lagos yesterday evening that I had committed to a long time ago and I didn't want to disappoint them. And this event was with rich people. So this event was organized by Forbes. You know those guys who do richest people in the world? It was Forbes, CNBC Africa, and Standard Chartered Bank. So they invited the super rich people into the room. So they did not invite me because I was rich, just to clarify. They invited me. They invited me because they wanted me to talk to them about planning their worlds and then making it tax efficient and complying with tax. You know, at the end of the day, it turns out that the most interesting discussion for them was this base. And they thought it was targeted at them. And I said, yes, it's targeted at you. One of them said, can't I take them to court? I said, sir, before you take them to court, comply first. Because when you get to that court, what would the judge do that? Would it not be the law? You have to comply first. He who comes to ethics must come with clean, clean hands. Comply first. And you can see in the room they were trying to give different excuses of should they do it, should they not do it. One of them said, how would they even know what I have in the UK, for example? That they will never know. One said, I spoke to my bankers in London and they said they won't disclose anything. I said, so don't be deceived. <laughs> that your banker doesn't even know what he was talking about. You know it's easy to just go to an organization and just talk to someone. Common reporting standard is not something that banks can negotiate. It's their country that they are agreed. So like if Nigeria agrees to do something and there's any bank and you may say we are not doing it, that means you, you are tired of doing banking, isn't it? So those 95 countries have agreed. And what that means is there will be automatic exchange of information about financial transactions, including bank balances. They will just send to like Nigeria does, does not need to ask. They will send to Nigeria automatically and say, Nigeria, these people, they are your people. <laughs> this is the money inside their bank accounts as of these dates. They will send. If you have a foreign bank account in any of those 95 countries, you would have received a letter actually from your bank. You know what the letter says? It says, we need to comply with common reporting standard effective from 2019. I think it's 2019. Uh, we need you to sign that it is okay for us to send your information to your country. If you sign, we are good. If you don't like this requirement, please close your account immediately. So you have two options. One, sign that it's okay, or two, you close the account. The question is, when you close the account, where do you take the money to? <laughs> Almost all the countries in the world that are relevant have signed, including all those island and tax havens where people used to hide money before. They have signed. The only major country that has not signed is the US. But nobody thinks about hiding anything in the US. It's even more dangerous <laughs> than anywhere else. Because they have their own fax card. Foreign accounts have compliance card that is even more stringent than CRS. One problem with the US is they don't like anybody telling them what to do. They prefer it that they won't tell the rest of the world. Because this was not their idea, that's why they haven't signed. But in their own little way, they can handle themselves. So, the legal framework is essentially the executive order, but the starting point is actually the constitution itself. The constitution says that we should all declare our income, policy, and pay our taxes. It's a constitutional requirement. And then we have the relevant laws from personal income tax to VAT to company income tax to stamp duty act, and the list is very long. Then we have the executive order, and then on top of that, there's an MOU, Memorandum of Understanding amongst the governors with the federal government. So just like to say, we're happy with this. Even though I said to them that the MOU was unnecessary, you didn't need to sign any MOU. Because they're not taking the powers of the state away from them. How BATE works is that the information is collected centrally. If you are arrested in data states, they then send the information to data states. And then you are asked to go to data states to go and pay your taxes based on what you declare. The reason why the information is collected centrally is to avoid people closing deals. So imagine that I'm a billionaire in Nigeria and I'm resident in data states. When I'm doing things, I have to declare honestly. If I do not fully declare this deal, this protection does not apply to me. I'm in trouble, right? When they find my details, which they are doing now. 
You know what they're doing? You know what they're doing? They're doing a balance sheet for those individuals that I told you about. 1,500, initially 150, now 15. They will come to you, say, sir, chief doctor, this XYZ. Do you recognize this list? Two houses in Dubai. Mm -hmm. Bought in 2005, the other one in 2011. And the cost of this. One in Houston, US. Bank balance in Switzerland, $8.4 million as of these days. That's what they're doing. So you know the reason why tax compliance rate is high in many developed countries? It's not because those guys like to pay tax. It's nobody likes to pay tax anywhere in the world. Forget about that. that, that that's where money is working, his story. No, even, even Donald Trump, in one of the countries that is most heavily taxed in the world and the most successful country on earth, the guy was not paying income tax for more than 10 years. So when people come, they will avoid it. He did not evade, by the way. He avoided it, which is okay. Uh, some people think that I'm not there to fund government. If they are stupid enough to create new polls, I'll take advantage of it, which is fine. So the thing with Nigeria is that people actually openly violate the law. So we're not even talking about morality issues now. It's just pure compliance. So the point is that all over the world, you have to rely on people paying taxes to be able to fund fund government. So when that information is collected centrally on that base, it's disseminated to where it should be. And the tax payer will go to where the law says you should pay your taxes to, to go and pay it. But imagine that um, the billionaire in dental states, and the governor is my friend, or I'm the kingmaker that made the governor governor. You know there's something like that in Nigeria. People think that you make somebody not us that voted, though. They think, I made you the governor. <laughs> yes. So I guess we just call the governor and say, what is it that they're talking about this base? Say, they say, everybody should pay that. Well, I mean, I'll give you two million naira. Say, yes, sir. They then collect two million naira and they let this guy go. Now, on that base, that cannot happen. If it happens, you haven't declared, you're still in trouble. Because if you, it's either you, Firstly, declare, you know, declare that you are a billionaire. And once we find out from asset tracing, we know that you have lied. So we do our normal prosecution and detailed investigation with penalty and interest and everything. If you declare honestly, but you did not pay the right amount of tax, we will know that it's not adding up business. It. If it doesn't add up, we ask you, you have not paid in full. When are you paying the balance? Intelligence is the reason why people pay taxes all over the world, not because they are nice people. When you know that government has your data, do you know that there are countries, as you speak today, Estonia is one of them, not even a massive country, where they said, why don't we ask people to file returns? It's not necessary. You know what? Government will prepare the return on your behalf. It's just for you to acknowledge that it's correct and submit. Can you imagine that? Governments got so confident that they know everything that you do. They said, don't worry about submitting that returns. <laughs> we will prepare it for you. So when it's time to submit returns, you just open your account on the tax authorities' website. You know you have your PIN to, to log in. You log in and you search your statement there, your revenue, your expenses. <laughs> and it says, please confirm that this is a true reflection of your affairs. As you are clicking like this, you know another thing? A number of women say, why should you be begging the taxpayer to pay? The law is there, right? Mm -hmm. So, if the law is there, I know your income, I know your expenses, I know the tax you're supposed to pay, I know where your bank account is, why am I asking you to pay? I don't debit it. <laughs> so, as, as you look at it and you say, this is my true account, I say submit. As you please submit, you get debit and last. <laughs> When you go to someone and say, I know who you are, we haven't paid time. Here is my information that I have. People tend to comply. If you ever bought dollars, they have your data. You pay 366 million pounds in school fees to UK schools alone, just UK schools, not US, not Europe, to 
send your kids abroad and pay school fees, right? But we know that that money did not fall from heaven. Why did you pay tax on it? Direct agreement, apart from the common reporting standard that covers 98, like, sorry, 95 countries, they signed direct agreement with the UK, US, a lot of those places. If you cover the UK, the US, Canada, and the UAE, they don't like to go. They've done that. Then if you have anything that moves, like motorcycle, I don't know whether they're being motorcycle, but clearly cars. And if you have a mobile phone, you know that every phone is registered. And the telecommunication operator can tell you how much call you made since you got that phone. If you get that data, you know as of today, 112 million you know, of counting phones, right, and lights you need. Because when you register, you recognize once. 112 million, which means everybody, including people that are not even taxable, have mobile phones. Almost everybody that is taxable has a phone, whether they are educated or not. Do you agree? Yes. If you collect that data and you say, NCC, anybody who spend 50k or more in a month on phone call cannot be poor. Because phone call is not the only thing that you do in life, isn't it? That cut off. And say anybody below this, let's leave them first. And you go to everybody above. You go to the tax record, you can't find their name. Don't ask them to register. Register them and send them an alert. You have been registered for tax purposes. <laughs> <laughs> but you have not paid any tax within 30 days. Please come and regularize your tax payments. <laughs> anyway, so that's what we call tax intelligence. If you have that, people will not be evading tax anymore. They are also using land registry. If, if, if the land registry, so imagine the whole of Abu, they are not a single person. Pay 10 million naira in personal income tax. Some properties in Abuja, the rent in one month alone is enough to pay 10 million tax. So, but you see, you can and you can hide properties. That's the thing about it. Even if you run away from Nigeria, property is still there. So, if you go into the land registry and open it up, see who are the guys who own these properties? Are they in my tax book? If they are not there, it's not a crime that they are not there yet come and regularize. So I think all of this will help us to move in the right direction. So as part of capacity building, somebody said I should talk about capacity building. As part of capacity building, what government is doing is they are recruiting 7,500 community tax liaison officers that are being trained specifically for these base. And they are doing it across the country. So nobody will say they didn't employ our people. So they're employing every state. All together for the country, it will be seven five. You would understand that some states will need more than others, right? Okay, so it's not equal number, but every state is represented. On top of that, the tax authorities are being trained, all 36 members of the JCB, including FRS, making 37. And this exercise that we are doing of talking to professionals. So those are the capacity building initiatives. To be honest, at the end of the day, everybody who is interested in doing this has to do it for themselves. I can tell you that it bates work, and I hope it does. Those of us in this room will be one of the biggest beneficiary of bates, and I'll tell you why. In countries where they take tax matters very seriously, Lawyers and accountants cannot be jobless. It's impossible. I just told you about someone who was nominated by Barack Obama to be a minister, and this person had two consultants, had a lawyer and an accountant to do their personal tax. Do you know of any single person in Nigeria who has hired a consultant for their personal tax? They're not interested because they don't even pay. If you don't have to pay, why do you need a lawyer to advise you? You don't need it. Why do you need an accountant to prepare an account? You don't need to pay. If this economy will start doing the right thing, paying taxes, doing genuine business, even if it's not genuine, pay tax first, and government stops stealing the money, Nigeria has no business being where we are. Oil money will be other income for us. You know about oil money without any crisis, no vandalization, maximum production, the best that we make from it in a year is under $50 billion. 
under 50 billion dollars. America produces, do you know that America is the number one oil producing country in the world? America produces more than 9 million barrels every single day. 9 million barrels. America does not have a national oil company. America prays for the price of oil to go down. Because the money they make from oil is very small. Guess how much they make from taxes? Six trillion dollars. America makes six trillion dollars from taxes. What they make from oil is insignificant. It's miscellaneous. That's the money you use to, if there's crisis somewhere or there, you know you want to be the world police. If I when you make six trillion dollars in revenue every year, you go and look for trouble where there's none. Because you have money to spend. Right? So we should get to a point where that 50 billion dollars from oil is our other income. And we can boast of a lot of money to make Nigeria the best place that is possible. I think that in terms of the energy of the people, in terms of their resilience, sometimes it's, it's unimaginable how Nigerians keep going. It's almost like everything around you is showing otherwise that by now you should be dead. But you are still alive. I was coming from Enugu this morning, I didn't find it funny. There was no flight to bring me to Asaba. There was no flight to Bini. And I was because we know all the forms in Nigeria. You know, this half of them with the judiciary part of it. Look at the reform in the electoral system. You know, all those that were caught didn't work from the electoral parties or the other. Often, as I'm talking to you, I'm not in charge in any court because the court itself is congested. Is there the same thing goes for corruption uh, cases? Is there any special court to help drive this initiative? Thank you very much. Um, my question is, um, you talk about uh, properties abroad that will be traced and taxed. Now, does it mean that if I live abroad, maybe 20, you get the power before the world gets the base of it? I walk there and I got property there, I pay tax. So that, I, that I to Nigeria. is what I'm trying to my property in Nigeria will be. Will it be traced from Nigeria to say that those properties are part of the problem that will pay tax? So that's what I want to know. But there are Nigerians who genuinely go and look at board, they are returnees. And they have properties generating money for them over there. Are we going to tax them when you know that when you will know that they have to pay that those money or that they that money from abroad, not from Nigeria? Or buying properties from Nigeria abroad with Nigerian money. Um, number two, you talked about um, Okay, sorry. My next question is, um, you let your adversary in life is very, uh, I mean, my knowledge has increased. I know we've got an email address. I don't know ask that. I don't need a solution for that. Give the soft copy and send it to our emails. Thank you. From Oka. Our protocol is up to Please, just a simple question. All of us will come from the image. And we have properties that we have. Inherited from our parents. What is the position? Yes. 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 Um, I want to I want to know the when the Eternal Association will take off. When? And what are the uh, protection? And what can we actually do to make our uh, Government to be more accountable. Thank you. From Wari, I can be My question is uh, this desk, that desk in the uh, uh, financial uh, task offices. I was part of the task office yesterday, and the task of the seem not to be aware of uh, this issue. Uh, and we are saying that uh, every task office has a desk. This is three months into this. July, September is gone, so we have six months. And if the information has not disseminated to the extent that even the task offices are not aware, how are we going to be sure that this we can get through with this one when the people concerned have not even been told what to do? from what I learned yesterday. The other one is, if a company is taking advantage of this uh, executive order, 
I will say that you need to prepare and file his normal audited accounts in terms of declaration. Thank you. I'm Dr. Newman Richards. I'm a lawyer. My question is, this laudable program, what are measures to check the incidences of double taxation? And I will, I will use that as a, for the purpose of illustration. For instance, Delta State just passed their consumption tax law, which is a form of tax or VAT. So if uh, businessmen or hotels, they are expected to pay VAT 5%, and they are also expected to pay 5% of the Delta State consumption tax law, which is clearly double taxation. Of course, Lagos State, it was tried, and there were a lot of uh, litigations that arose from that. In that situation, what are measures to protect the taxpayer? Thank you. And I have already known that I'm worried this trip. Uh, my challenge with this uh, base is in consideration of uh, landlords. Because we understand that a good number of property owners are not in the tax net. How are we going to bring them in? Because we understand that the base embraces all income earners and you cannot divulge this person's from the racket. Thank you. I have two questions. Let's say for instance people that are already captured in through the PE, they already paid tax. Then they have savings in their accounts. You are enjoining us to take advantage of this uh, opportunity provided. If somebody has Savings is in his account. Is he expected to go and declare it to enjoy what is provided under this platform? Another thing is, another question is this: If somebody, for instance, you are into private uh, business like farming, and already you are captured under this belief, what do you advise the person to do? To go and uh, declare this other source of. Uh, uh, income for taxation again. Thank you. I'm working on Oka, Oka District. I'm looking at the period, nine months. I'm thinking it's very short for us to gain the benefits of this uh, uh, of this initiative. So I'm thinking that government should look into it. Mostly coming from the angle that there is still less awareness of this of this uh, initiative and I think the, the length of time should be extended and then more awareness carried on to the roots, states, local government, so as to get the benefits. Thank you. All protocols will help, sir. Sir, my question is immediate and very close to my heart. What's in it for us? How do we stand to benefit? As accountants, lawyers, professionals in general. Thank you. So it's a book I wrote about two years ago and the entire process goes into helping less privileged kids, but also advocacy. Uh, so we're spending about 500,000 around now to do um, a tax policy website, uh, because we wanted the Ministry of Finance to do it, where you can have more engagement about tax policy, administration, how money is being spent, that people can also interact with. So if you have something that is going wrong, you can upload a video, or if you recorded something, you wanted to get CC and somebody says, pay it right and just record it and put it there. And they gave reasons why they couldn't do it. And long after the reward was about money. So well, you know what? We'll do it for you. So we're using this foundation to do it. The tax free association that somebody asked as well is being funded by the proceeds from this book. And the way it's going to work, so we're currently registering it. Uh, CAC had initially rejected the name. They said they didn't like the name. So luckily, when I got invited to the state house for 
the update on the use of baby cells with the VP and the head of MBAs and some ministers, I raised the question and I mentioned that specifically that there's a private initiative to help Nigeria around salvation, transparency, awareness, and since he doesn't want to register us. So the Registrar General was there, so it became defensive. Uh, just to save face. After the event, I went to him and I said I, sh I should not be angry, that it's just his people didn't understand what they were doing. He gave me his contact, so I've written to him, I think it was yesterday or two days ago. So I'm hopeful that they will register it. Uh, because we need all those legal stuff to be done first. There will be a lot of trustees. So the way it's going to work, so you can watch out for it, is that there will be three levels of membership. The platform we are using to do this is the Nigeria Leadership Initiative. So it's not even me, even though I'm the one behind, but you won't see me. Um, so it's the Nigeria Leadership Initiative. The board of director of uh, NLI have approved it. So they really want to convey it. So they will invite institutions who will be the first level. So MBA, ICANN, CITN, NASIMA, LCCI, Manufacturing Association of Nigeria, NECA. They will be the highest level of membership. And they're the ones that will lead the organization. Smena, for example, SME guys. Everybody will be there. Then level two will be corporates. Companies will just sign up. Zenith Bank, Unilever, PNG, even small companies. Then level three will be individuals. Just sign up. I'm a Nigerian, I'm a taxpayer, I'm interested. The money to fund the work of the association will be coming from the corporates and the individuals. The institutions will not pay and they'll be the ones to lead. Why is that important? If we take on government today, under that platform, and say, I don't like what they're saying, what can you do to us? Just imagine that structure. What can you do to that structure? Nothing. You can't harass them, you can't stop them from doing business, you can't without their license, you can't do anything to them because they are Nigerian, and they want Nigeria to work. So that's the whole idea, um, and I'm very optimistic that that will help significantly. Because in my own two way, I know a million and one things I would like to say, but I can't find a platform to say it. If I find that platform, there are so many other people who are happy to join. They will say, they will speak. We're going to have an advocacy unit where if somebody is even harassing you on tax matters, like you pay tax and you bought a plot of land, and somebody say you that you bought the land is the one to come and pay it. When the law says it's the seller, right? Because I'm the one that is easy to hold. You bring that up. You don't need to spend a penny. The association will take it up on your behalf. Some of the things that the association will do is to do a study of all the 36 states. You know we don't even have data to say anything now. You do a study. You know the number of taxes that have been collected. Up to local government level, publish it. The amount of money they say they have and they collected from it, publish it. The work they have done. I don't know how many of us know about budgets. Budgets is doing a fantastic job, and it's just one individual that started it. Budgets today is one of the reasons why National Assembly have disclosed it. Literally, they have disclosed about what they were earning. Before that, it was one line. Budgets has been on it for more than three years. If you go to Budgets website, and I, I encourage you to just follow them, it's very sad when I go to Budgets uh, accounts on social media, Twitter, Facebook, the number of followers is less than Linda and <laughs> And these are guys who spend time, they'll take the budget and break it down. They'll tell you whether it makes sense or not. They were the ones that made us realize that Nigeria was paying rent for Asura. We haven't found the land of the tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> you know those things are voluminous, 700 and something pages. It's not everybody can read. If you read, those people understand. But some guys have the knowledge. And when they finish doing it, you know what? They put on a page easy with graphics, and they ask those questions. The question they sent to National Assembly was line by line. They analyzed everything. They saw that some MPs were buying Prado, 40 million, some were buying 12 million. Tell us the difference between the two Prado. Those guys need support. They are not asking for money. But once they put something on Twitter, just like and retweet it. When politicians see that they have 5 million followers, they take them even more seriously. Yes, yeah. So that's what we need to do. That's what we're also going to do with this task fair association. Hopefully we get 10, 15 million people following. When you take up an issue, it will be done because they are afraid of the public. They want to please us because they want to come back. And that's how we fix things one thing at a time.
So if you can afford, please buy a copy of the book. We'll be supporting this project in that way. So I'll go through these questions very quickly. There are 12 of them and they're excellent questions. The first one is, would there be a special call to handle vein? The answer is no, but there's something that is in the works. I can tell you that there's a committee that has been formed already to rewrite all Nigerian tax laws because they are arcane. Look at the stamp here. It's a law of 1939. Nobody thought there was going to be internet in 1939, let alone transfer our money electronically. Uh, we have been very lazy as a people for so long. Yeah, personal income tax, for example, look at it. Some of it is even embarrassing to say I'm Nigerian, this is the law of Nigeria. And we have smart people that can volunteer to write those laws on our behalf, even for free. But there's no leadership to make it happen. But that's changing now. So a committee has been established. So every AFPD will be contacted, CIT will be contacted, ICANN will be contacted. They've invited you to join that committee. The whole idea is to rewrite the law, make it very simple, make it modern, make it investment friendly and, and protect the poor people. If you have read national tax policy, that was a difficult thing when we got to the eventually to say that it is inhuman to ask somebody who earns 20,000 or 30,000 and a half more to still be paying tax. Life is already difficult for them. If you go to the UK, for example, if you earn 11,000 pounds per annum or less, you have no income tax liability at all. In fact, don't even find returns. Because by their standard, life is difficult for you. 11,000 pounds is like 5 million naira. We know that we are not at that level, but whatever level we can do, let's start. Maybe our level will be 50,000 per month. Anybody who earns 50,000 per month or less, you should not have to pay tax at all. If you have a small business and you operate a company to do it, just so things are a little bit organized, why should you pay 30% CIT? It doesn't make sense. So those things have now been put in the national tax policy, but we need to write it into law. So that the rate for small business will be small. If you are any elite, you don't have to pay income tax because it also adds to inequality in the country. So those things have been addressed, including a special court for tax purposes. Number two, does it mean that those who live abroad have to pay tax? For example, Nigerians living abroad legitimately, no crime, nothing, they're just doing their own thing. Do they have to pay? The answer is yes and no, it depends. So whether you live abroad or you live in Nigeria, the first question to ask is, are you tax residents in Nigeria? It is not by citizenship, so I can be Nigerian and not be liable to tax in Nigeria. If you spend 183 days in any 12-month period, by our law, whether we like it or not, it's still the law today, you are tax residents in Nigeria. And therefore, you are liable to tax on your worldwide income. But you are entitled to release. So let's, let me give you an example that is more practical. So I'm Nigerian, and I travel to the UK and the US frequently for some other things. So in a year, I spend 200 days in Nigeria, and the remaining 165 outside Nigeria. I'm likely to tax in Nigeria, isn't it? I'll declare my income, and I'll tell you the taxes are paid abroad so that you give me a credit for it as applicable, and I'll take the balance if there's balance to pay. Scenario two, I'm Nigerian, I've relocated outside Nigeria. For the past four years, I've not even come back to Nigeria. Now, I'm no longer tax resident in Nigeria, even though I'm Nigerian. But imagine that I have a property in Lagos, and I rent it out, and I'm collecting rent. I have to pay tax in Nigeria, isn't it? I must pay tax on that. Even though I'm no longer in Nigeria, I have an asset that is liable to tax in Nigeria, and it's being taxed, and the income is being taxed, you pay it. If you are in Nigeria, you never traveled abroad, but your money has traveled abroad, okay? And you have a house in London, you are collecting rent, you are in Nigeria. Now, the question of the law is that you are liable to tax in Nigeria on your worldwide income. So that rent, if you declare it and bring it back to Nigeria, you'll be exempted from tax on it. If you do not bring it back to Nigeria, you pay tax on it in Nigeria, or you get credit for taxes you pay in the UK because of double tax between Nigeria and the UK. If you declare under Bates, and you say, I have rental income, I have a property in the UK, my rental income is £10,000 in a year. You say, that property, when you bought it, how much did you buy it? 
I want it 400,000 pounds. Where did you get the 400,000 pounds? If you didn't have any evidence that you paid tax on the 400,000 pounds, now on that base, we're saying come and pay tax. It is not the property that is being taxed. It's the income that you use in buying it that is being taxed. If you cannot explain that taxes have been paid on it before, or that you inherited it from someone else, or that it was a gift. Number three, can we get some copies of the slide? Answer is yes. So if you, if you leave your email, if you know that you did not write it properly, give your card, because sometimes you see the emails will be bouncing back. So we send to everybody, we'll also send to the district site of ICANN that organize this event, so they can also send out as well. So you have two means of getting it. So your answer is yes, you get the materials. Number four, what is the position of properties inherited, say from the village, from our parents? I can tell you that that's not even the focus on base. Okay? But still the claims, 